everybody it's matt the dice trucker from the literary gamers here uh, i just want to do a quick uh, announcement before you start the video this is the lord of the rings the card game this is the passage through mirkwood with the spirit deck um the reason i wanted to come talk to you a little bit i could hold it up i guess the whole time is um i was having some trouble with the recording equipment and so i was trying to move quickly through the game um which also meant that I wasn't catching everything. There were a few unrevealed effects that didn't happen. However, I did catch them shortly after and was able to correct them. Every mistake I made, I did find um, shortly after I made that, so I was able to rewind a, a bunch of stuff. So before you comment on the mistakes I made, which you know they're gonna be there, thank you for pointing them out, but before you comment, know that I probably already caught it you just have to keep watching the video. Uh, just keep watching the video. I'll have caught the mistake. This wasn't my best play of it, but um, I was having such trouble with the recording equipment today uh, when I was making this video that I don't want to have to redo the whole thing. Um, but I did catch the um, did catch the uh, the mistakes. Um, so hope you enjoy the playthrough of the spirit deck, and we'll see you next time, everybody. Uh, next week is uh, Tactics going through Passage Through Mirkwood, and then we'll finally be through all of those, through the, the Preconstructeds, and then we'll be able to do, uh, I think it's Ambush on the Anduin is the next one. I'm not sure, the rule book's all the way over there. So, see you next time, everybody, uh, and enjoy the playthrough. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Here we are again with the Passage Through Mirkwood, but we are playing through with the Spirit deck today. We lost pretty badly last week with our lore deck. Um, and if you didn't get a chance to see it, I did upload two days in a row. That was because I had done a redo of the leadership deck. And then the next day I uploaded the lore deck. But Thursdays are pretty much going to be when I upload a Lord of the Rings playthrough. I'm going to try to get it out either in the morning or early afternoon, depending on how well my internet speed wants to work for me that day. Uh, so here we have the spirit deck. Uh, the Spirit deck has a starting threat of 24, and I know that I read it every week, but I'm going to do it again. This is Flies and Spiders. You are traveling through Mirkwood Forest, carrying an urgent message from King Thranduil to the Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail, the spiders gather around you, and, as all the other weeks we've seen, the we have a forest spider and the old forest road in the staging area for us already. And then this lovely quote here. The nastiest things they saw were the cobwebs, dark, dense cobwebs with threads extraordinarily thick, often stretched from tree to tree or tangled in the lower branches on either side of them. There were none stretched across the path, but whether because of some magic kept it clear or for what other reason they could not guess from the hobbit. And we need eight. Come on, focus. There we go. Eight um, progress tokens. All right, so let's get our six to start. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as we would have had our, <clears throat> excuse me, done a lot of filming today, so I'm going to be drinking some water too. So if you hear me swallow, don't point out that you heard me swallow. It's a basic human thing we all do. Um, so I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to gain the resources already. Draw a card. And we have some, uh, some events, an attachment, allies. So your basic stuff in this here. Um, so now it comes down to planning. Um, Eowyn is very powerful for the quest. She brings four and I can discard one, um, to give Eowyn plus one until the end of the round and it can be triggered by each player. So pretty much I can go in with five by just questing Eowyn. But I could also quest this Lorien guide here, which is after commits to a quest, place a progress token on the active location. And that can be good if we have some really nasty locations popping up later on. But it does cost three to get this person out. So I might just see what happens within the first round and instead give the favor of the lady to Eowyn. Because that'll give her an extra. So we'll spend the two, two resources in the favor of the lady. One mistake I made in the leadership um, that was pointed out was uh, a lot of the... And I just... I It was something I missed and it's not in my hand. But Eleanor here has it and all, as do my other characters. This symbol right here means you can only really have one of them out. Uh, I think it's because the word restricted is thrown around this game as well. 
and from what I remember in other LCGs from Fantasy Flight, uh, Restricted just, that was what stopped me from putting others out. Um, but that means something different in this game. So we're looking for that, and uh, the favor of the lady does not have that symbol, so we could have multiples of those out. Okay, so time to go questing. I will quest with Aowen. And let's see if there's anything I'd like to discard. Uh, you know, I think we're going to keep it safe and just have her at five with the favor of the lady. The forest spider and the old forest road all oh, give us three threat. By the way, we got this play mat from Brian Raditz at the portal in Manchester, Connecticut. Um, everyone should go see him, say hi. He's going to be, I believe he's going to be supporting uh, this game, but he has a bunch of stuff from the previous releases as well. So thank you, Brian, for the for the play mat. All right, so since it's only uh, solo, we're going to reveal here, and we have another two. So the entire five was soaked up by threat. Um, Dol Guldur orcs when revealed, the first player me chooses one character currently committed to the quest, deal two damage to that character. Now I could just spend the one left because I don't like getting that much damage right away. So I'm going to spend my one resource to play this one reveal. Cancel the one revealed effects of a card that was just revealed from the encounter deck. So let's do that. Does go into staging, however. Now with the starting threat of 24, thankfully the only thing that's going to hit us are those orcs and we were able to soak up a great deal of the, um, of the threat so we don't have to take any more threat. This is going to get traveled to, and I will stand up Eowyn, because those Dol Guldur orcs, oh, sorry for knocking that, do not have any shields, but we may be able to get rid of them right away. Um, and the traveling effect of the old forest road gets to stand her up. All right, so the optional encounter, I think we're just going to encounter the orcs this round. They're the only ones that would encounter us from the threat. All right, so they get a shadow card. Now, I do have a card in hand that says to cancel the shadow effect, but I don't have any resources anymore. So, um, I'm going to have Eleanor defend because she has uh, two to defend. Um, I can also exhaust her to cancel the one revealed effects of a treachery card, though. It couldn't have been, couldn't have been that. Um, so, I'll have her defend with two. They're hitting with two, but as of right now, they are getting no shadow effect. So, that's good. So then what I'll do is I'll have both Dunn here and Eowyn attack. Their combined attack is three. Oh, sorry. They attack for two. She has a defense of two. That all got soaked up. Uh, so they have zero defense. So all three of the attack from Dunn here and Eowyn basically um, uh, get rid of this. Now, Dunn here could... I could have kept them out. And Dunn here could have attacked the forest spider before it engaged with us. But I didn't want that... Um, to remain engaged last time. Oh, sorry, last time, no, for the next round. So that's it for the round. We uh, ready everybody. I want to make sure I get that term right. And we increase our threat. All right. Let's get some resources for the next round. Uh, if anyone's wondering, these are great to hold um, components. Uh, I got them at Michael's. I think it was Michael's. Or basically, cupcake tins. Um, right, and we draw a card. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead. I know it's going to be wasting a lot of resources, but we're going to spend all three to put out the Lorien Guide. All right, let's quest. Uh, let's quest with Aowen and the Lorien Guide, so then we can have more going out. This does put the risk out there that we would have um, another enemy come out, because I know that four spiders are automatically engaging us this time. Um, and I'm also going to discard one of the other Lorien Guides to give Aowen a plus one. So we're getting four, five, six from her ability, seven. So right now, the threat is two from the forest spider. We reveal a card, and it's an enemy here. Uh, it's another two, but, so that makes four threat. Three gets through, and the old forest road has been traveled. Okay, thankfully, the Dol Guldur Beastmaster is not going to engage us. 
Um, and we'll see what happens, because I think if we have Eleanor just defend against the forest spider, um, Dunhir will be able to attack the Beastmaster for more. Because his ability is, um, can it target enemies in the staging area, and when he attacks alone, he gets plus one. So that's not a bad one to have, especially in a deck that starts at such low threat. So uh, we're not traveling because there's no location. So let's go to the encounter. And so the forest spider is going to engage us, which means it has a, has a plus one for this round only. Um, so get a bit of shadow card. Let's do what we said. Eleanor is going to defend. And a shadow card. Uh, no, sorry, it's a card without a shadow effect. Uh, now I have to make the decision if I want to um, attack the forest spider because now all the enemies that can attack have attacked. So let me do the math here. If I were to attack with Dun here, I'd only do one point of damage um, versus if I attacked the Beastmaster, I could do more. So let's do that. I will attack the Beastmaster because of his ability. And he's a three and the Beastmaster blocks for one. So I'm going to put two damage on the Beastmaster. Now, I don't believe, even if you attack them in the staging area, uh, that they engage with you automatically. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, it's just the uh, attacking in the staging area. Let me just, I'm just checking the rule on that one. Page 17. Staging area. Um, I don't see anything that says they automatically engage. Um, if they get attacked. So if I'm doing that incorrectly, please let me know because that would actually change a great deal about um, about the game here. Engaged. Um, has to enter a play area from another game location. Um, combat phase. Yeah, it's got to be an answer to this on the internet somewhere. Uh, combat phase is just talked about on page 24 and 25 of the rule book. Uh, oh, not the rule book, sorry, in here. 24, 25. And player attacks. Um, So I yeah I hate to waste all this time here but <coughs> excuse me I don't think they engage so if I've got that wrong internet go ahead and at me um, I don't think I engage with that enemy so we stand everybody up next time the spider attacks us it's going to um, only be at a two instead of the three because that's a one time deal. All right, we increase our threats. We're now at 26. Let's get some resources again. Let's see if we don't waste them this time. Draw a card. We got the Wandering Took. Not a bad one to have. So reduce your threat by three. Um, not sure how this would work solo. Um, to give control of Wandering Took to another player, raise that player's threat by three. So I just, I guess, do it for the stats, right? Um, I think I'm just going to sit on my resources this round um, and go to straight to questing. So we will use Eowyn at four or five. Do I want to discard something? Yeah, I actually don't like that took. So now she's at six, seven. Um, and we have two in the threat. And we get another two. All right, so three progress tokens are going because we have two here and two here so three progress tokens are going to go on the quest all right so um we are going to travel uh which means we can't draw any cards i'm fine with that uh because that means i can hopefully not waste all of my uh resources here anyone does have a resource um okay so the forest spider is going to attack i'll have eleanor defend again um and yeah eleanor will defend no shadow ability. 
Uh, done here is he's going to do what he does, and he's going to wait a second. All right, so if I attack, I'm not attacking the spider, but if I attack him, attacking for three, yep, so he gets another two damage on him. Don't worry, I'm hopefully going to get the Lorien guide out, the other one I have out there next time, because uh, then we can get through that um, a bit more easier, and then I can finally start attacking this forest spider. I just don't want to have to deal with, because that Beastmaster is rough. Okay. Now I can't draw any cards, but I can still get resources. All right. Uh, did I, yes, I went up to, we're at 27 now for threat. Did I go up in threat? Let's just play it safe. Uh, let's see. How many turns have I had? Well, let's find out. So I have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we st you start the game. So yeah, start at 24, nine, 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 six, 27, and I would have had that. So yeah, we're fine. We're, I think I did it. If I didn't do it, I'm sorry, and then we can't count this as an actual win. Like I said, you've come to see Matt play Lord of the Rings. Come for the game. Stay for the mistakes. That's how it goes. I think I'm just talking too much in the end. Okay, so let me spend the three, because like I said, I can't draw any cards as long as the enchanted stream is out there. And I'll put out another Lorien guide. Okay. Now let's quest. We'll send A1 out on the quest, and we'll send just one Lorien guide. So we'll see if we can get some. Uh, after commits to a quest, place a progress token on the active location. All right. Does that mean that I could do that now? I think it does. Committing to a quest. Committing a quest. Page 13. I just want to see when we quest. I think once you commit, you can do the ability, right? But you can still have that committed to the quest because of the Aragorn thing from a few weeks ago. Commit characters, yes. Yeah, so it says after uh, they've committed to a quest, place one progress token in the active location. So I'll do both of them, uh, and that's two progress tokens on the active location. It gets rid of the enchanted stream. But we've got four, five, six, seven. If I discard a card, I can make it an eight. And I will discard. I'm discarding Dwarven Tomb only because I'm not deck building yet. Um, so I think I'll be fine because I've got plenty of copies in this deck. So I've got eight for the quest. Eight. There's... Oh no. I do apologize for that weird break. My microphone fell out of the iPad here and that's where I usually film. And whenever that happens, everything goes all staticky with the sound. So... Sorry about that, folks. Um, so what I was saying is because I have a deck built, um, Lord, I'm, I'm discarding this Dwarven Tomb. So we have four, five, six with the discard, seven, eight going to the quest with two and the threat. And we have Ungoliant spawn at three. So we're getting three more on the quest. Give me one second because Ungoliant spawn also has a when revealed effect. Each character currently committed to the quest Gets minus one to the end of the phase. Uh-oh. So let me redo that math. Okay. Let's keep that there for a second. Each character gets minus one. So these are zero. So A one's at three. Uh, so, so, sorry, four and five. And then six from her ability. So only five. And there's five in the pool. So nothing goes on the quest. All right. Okay. Yeah, I've got to find a better way to, to keep an eye on this microphone, everybody. All right, we're back here. So basically with Ungoliant Spawn, there was no way for me to put anything on the quest right now. So that being said, let's just go on to traveling. There's nothing to travel to. We've got rid of our thing, so that means we can start drawing cards. Um, so let's start uh, defending uh, and attacking. Uh, the good thing is we'll be able to take out that Beastmaster. The bad news is he's gonna wanna do that. So. I'm talking to myself for just a moment here. But yeah, let's go ahead and defend against the Forest Spider with Eleanor. Do we have a shadow? We do not. All right, so it hits for two. She soaks it up. Not a problem. 
Uh, she should have a wound on herself, by the way. I do apologize for that. Um, if you've typed into the comments already that she should have had a wound, thank you. I did notice. Um, appreciate the time uh, that you put into that. Okay, so now I have an option. I could choose to attack the forest spider with Dunn here. He would only give the forest spider one wound, however. Or I could just finish off the Beastmaster. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna attack the Beastmaster. Uh, he would have taken two wounds and it kills him. All right. Okay. That's all we can do. All right. And for once, my microphone hasn't fallen off, causing me to have more static. Should be a fun video to edit, everybody. <laughs> I think I swore the last time. It's okay. We're all adults here. I hit the thing on YouTube. All right, and let's go ahead and up that threat to 28. Is that going to get in focus for me? There we go, 28. All right, let's get some resources. Like I said, this time we can draw cards because that card is gone now. Well, I could draw one card, which is choose an enemy engaged with a player, return that enemy to the staging area. Hmm, that might not be a bad idea. All right, now, Ungoliant Spawn is the only thing in the staging. I'm not going to play anything right now. Um, I'm not going to discard anything either. So we're going to use Aowen at five, and let's just do one Lorien guide. Yeah, I'm not going to play anything. Uh, so we've got six. I'm not discarding anything this time. And we have King Spider. So this puts our threat at... Five, we committed six, so we get that there. Okay, so now I can no longer kind of fiddle with Dunn here. He's got to start attacking uh, units as they come out because um, King Spider's going to attack us. There's no location to travel to, so it's going to engage. Let's give ourselves some shadow cards here. All right, I'll use Eleanor again to defend against the Forest Spider. No shadow. Hits for two, she soaks it up with her stats. Um, and then King Spider, oh sorry, there was a run revealed. Each player must choose and exhaust one character they control. So let's just exhaust the Lorien guide. All right, yes, I missed a rule again, shocker. Um, see if it has a shadow, oh, Dun here is gonna defend on King Spider. Um, and it has a shadow ability. Attacking enemy gets plus one, plus three if undefended. So it's hitting for four. Dun here only has one. So he's going to take three wounds. All right. Yes, I do apologize for missing the one revealed. It's going to happen, folks. Perhaps you should watch the whole video before you start adding me. Okay. All right. Let's unexhaust everybody. Hopefully we can get an ally in hand. Threat goes up by one. Okay, we're going to get some resources out there. Okay, and we drew uh, the Galadrim's Greetings, which is reduce one player's threat by six or reduce each player's threat by two. Um, just so we don't have to be engaged with Ungoliant Spawn, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and take one from each. And our threat goes down by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Then we'll see how things are going to go, but I might consider playing this event. But let's see how things go with the questing. AO1's going to quest. But I think to be safe, she's going to be the only one. So that's five. Ungolian spawn is a three. We have a treachery card. Each enemy and each location currently in the staging area gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. If there are no cards in the staging area, driven by shadow gains surge. So four, L, uh, AON committed five, so one goes on the quest. Okay. No place to travel. Let's give some shadow cards to our enemies. Um, all right, so... Forest Spider will attack, and I'll use Eleanor to defend. Um, and no shadow. 
If I use done here, and those will be four, and he's four to, to kill. So I'm going to play. Uh, I should have made that decision before having to defend with Eleanor. Either or. Yeah, let's just let's play this this round out. See how it goes. Um, we'll have the Lorian guide defend against King Spider. Shadow defending player must choose and discard one attachment they control. Which means favor of the lady is now in discard. Um, hits for three. She has zero to defend. Goes into discard. I could choose to attack. Um, let's go ahead and attack King Spider. And let's just use both to attack. So that's a combined attack of three, has one defense. So two on King Spider. All right, stand everybody up. Okay. Get some resources. And draw, oh, raise my threat, I won. And I got another light in the dark here. All right. What should I do? I've got really nothing to play. It's all events in my hand. So I just have to math out how I want to handle uh, the possibility of um, what's going to come out of that deck. So. I say let's just, not let's just, let's quest with Eowyn, and we're not going to discard anything, and we'll quest, and I have a plan, don't worry, quest with the Lorian guide, um, and so we're going in with five, Ungoliant has three, Ungoliant spawn has three, so another two, so nothing gets, gets added to our threat, nothing gets added to the quest. When revealed, the first player chooses one character currently committed to a quest. Deal two damage to that character. To be safe, we're just going to do it to the Lorian guide. I am now going to play... No. No, I'm not going to play that. Nothing to travel to. The Dol Guldor orcs will engage with us because their threat is fairly low. Alright. So now that engagement is done... Sorry, encounter. Um, I'm going to play Light in the Dark which costs two resources. Choose an enemy engaged with a player. Return that enemy to the staging area. Now, I would say initially that that is a mistake because of um, when it engages, it's gonna have a three, but I also have wounds on that spider. Um, no, you know what's gonna happen? We are gonna send the spider back, this one. Um, so then we'll play that again. And we'll throw the Dole Guldor orcs back. And don't worry, I, there's a method to what's going on with my madness. So it deals a shadow card, Eleanor will defend. Shadow ability, defending player must choose and discard one attachment they control. Don't have any right now. So now, Dunn here is going to attack for three on the forest spider and take care of that. Is it a poor decision? Probably, but you forget that I'm the one playing, so I'm going to make tons of poor decisions. All right. All right, stand everyone back up. Increase our threat by one. Oh, I tried to do it one-handed. And we get some resources. One, two, three, where's the head? Come on, there you are. Two, three. Let's draw a card, and this is Will of the West. Choose a player, shuffle that player's discard pile into their deck, remove this from the game. Um, still this early in the game, I would say, eh, that's when I can discard with AON, because she's got three, five to fight against. So let's go ahead and do that. And she'll discard Will of the West. And she's going over the five. So it's just going to come down. What we'll be adding to threat is here. 
So we're going to add to threat because that's the difference of our failed quest. Now I'm not going to travel there because no, I should. Let's travel. And we exhaust done here to do that. Um, poor spider gets that. Eleanor defends. No shadow ability. Hits for two. She soaks it up. I have no one to um, to hit. All right. Oh, poop. I made a mistake. Yes, get off the keyboard. I know I made a mistake. These engage. So let's give them a shadow card. No shadow ability. So two, I'm going to put on Aowen. Because remember, it doesn't matter how many shields, it just all comes through. Okay. Now I can stand everyone up. Uh, let's get you some resources. Draw a card, increase threat. All my events are popping up in here. Not bad, uh, not bad, but still a little rough. Okay. Questing, a one's gonna go. And she's only at a four because I can't discard anything in hand without basically messing up the rest of the game and I don't think I'm gonna last much longer. Mountains of Mirkwood. So that equals a five. So we'll go up in threat by one. Okay, so I just put that there so you can see it. All right. So uh, travel has already happened, so we cannot travel to that location. So we just need to give some shadow cards out. Dolgoldor Orcs and the Forest Spider. Uh, done here will defend against the Dolgoldor Orcs. I realize it'll be his... Mm. Either way, he's dying. So no shadow ability. They hit for two. He only has a defense of one. That's that. Okay. So now Eleanor will defend against the forest spider. Uh, Shadow. Defending player must choose and exhaust a character they control two instead of this is undefended. I have no more characters to exhaust. Hits for two. She soaks it up. And I have nothing to attack with. Uh, oh, all the done here is resources get chucked. And our threat goes up. So I think my biggest mistake was wasting time on that Beastmaster because in the end, um, oh, and yeah, I got another event in hand. Um, I could have been fighting this forest spider instead. By the way, they're out of frame, but I am giving resources and all that out. So I have no option. I can't even quest because if I do... Uh, things are going to get through, and I'm already at five, so I'm not, uh, well, let's commit A1 of the quest. I can't see myself surviving past this round, but let's see what happens. And another forest spider. So A1 was four. We have three, five, seven out there. So three gets added to my threat. Okay. Nowhere to travel. I'm going to let the orcs attack through. Shadow ability. Attacking enemy gets plus one uh, strength. So it's three. Uh, I got to put that on Aowen. She is dead. All her tokens go away. And then Eleanor will defend against the forest spider. No shadow ability. She is able to soak up the, the attack. All right. So she's still going strong. So yeah, she defended. So now I'm going to ready her. She gets her resource, 34. And let's see, do I draw another event? Of course I do. This one is stand and fight. Um, but I could do this. I have the resources for it. So it is time to do this. Choose an ally with a printed cause of X in any player's discard pile, but that ally into play under your control. So the only thing I would have actually though would be these Lorien guides. So that's not even worth it. This is 
pretty much over. Nothing's getting committed to the quest, so we have to shuffle this deck. Oh, King Spider flipped over on me. And then, not a win revealed, but still. Now we have three, five, seven, nine. So I'm at 43 for threat. All right. Orcs, spiders, get a shadow card. She'll defend against the orcs. Um, and it has a shadow ability. Defending player must choose and exhaust one character they control to. If it was undefended, that is soaked up by her ability. Um, and this one comes through with no shadow completely at two attack. Three, no, two, two attack. That's right. Eleanor is dead. All right. That is the spirit deck for Passage Through Mirkwood. Our leadership deck was the one that's gotten through the furthest. So, um, yes, I made mistakes. Yes, I acknowledge those mistakes. You don't have to at me. I realized what they were. And if you made it to the end of the video, you got a chance to uh, hear all of them in their full glory. Thank you for joining me. Next time, we're looking at the tactics deck. Um, and hopefully, we'll make it further than, than this. See you next time, everyone.